Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel, and I'm a board-certified, fellowship-trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today, I'm going to be doing a video on lower face laxity and things that we can do to snatch up the lower face. Now, I've done a video of this in the past, but the treatments in aesthetics are always changing. There's always new tightening devices or lasers or laser device protocols that are changing and different injectables, different methods and techniques and, and tools that we have. And it's a rapidly advancing field, and I have my finger on the pulse because I have had extensive training in this area, probably more so than most. So I get early access to these devices and tools and try new things and just like to keep my YouTube channel updated with the latest in cosmetics and aesthetics and dermatology. So follow me if you haven't subscribed. My sponsors all, my sponsors all non-content. My content's all non-sponsored and I like to keep it that way. From the minute I graduated from medical school and the minute I finished my residency and fellowship, I never accepted any paid partnerships from companies because I want to be able to provide the best treatments for my patients and people who follow me, not because I'm tied into some contract with some company to do so. So I really um, have stuck true with that. That's something that I, I have a lot of integrity with and I will never change. So anything that I talk about today in this video or any of my videos are treatments that I truly believe are the best for you and for my patients. And if I change, I have the freedom to do so. If something better comes along or something that I previously liked is having complications or we're seeing things that we don't like, I like to change with the times. So if you follow me on this channel, you'll have the most updated information and real information. I'm not a YouTuber that doesn't see patients. I mainly see patients. I'm in my office four days a week, and the fifth day I'm doing more administrative um, business work, but on those four days where I see and treat patients, I'm doing 100% cosmetics and 100% lasers, devices, injectables, and all things aesthetics. And I feel that a lot of people on social media these days, that's their main form of, of that's their main career is just taking you know paid partnerships from companies and just pumping out a bunch of YouTube you know videos or you know on Instagram or TikTok. Whereas me, I'm actually like working with my hands with these devices, seeing patients day in and day out, and you know seeing hundreds of patients in in real life. And then when I get a chance to, I come and I make these YouTube videos, and they're not the highest quality. I mean, we just moved into this house, and this is our office area, which we haven't even done anything to. So don't mind my background. I'm not going to have a perfect YouTube studio. I just try to find a quiet area in my house where my kids and my dog and Justin's not running around and I can try to find a, a little quiet place and just um, get these videos out to you because it's all about the education and exchanging of ideas and information. So without further ado, we're going to take a deep dive into lower face rejuvenation and snatching the lower face. And also I have to mention, I just got my eyebrows microbladed and retouched yesterday, so they're a little bit darker than usual because it's so funny in my comments, I get like the weirdest comments, like your eyelashes are too full or your brows are darker this week than they were before or you have a different lip gloss on. So things may change because I'm always evolving and adapting myself and I had to get my brows retouched yesterday. Okay, so one of the most common things that people come in when they see to see me as an initial consultation in my office is lower face laxity. And this starts probably around, depending on the person, mid-30s to late-30s, and then definitely in 40s and 50s for sure. So how do we keep this area snatched by looking natural? Now, everything in aesthetics goes in different phases. It's kind of like fashion. Like there's trends in aesthetics and I've been practicing dermatology for almost 20 years now. So I've been around a long time and I've, things, I've seen things go in and out of phases. Now we're just kind of coming off this epidemic of filler where people were doing so much filler because they're trying to lift and tighten and pull and snatch the face by injecting and pumping a bunch of filler into people's faces. That's not the way you want to go for lifting and tightening and snatching the lower face and we're kind of coming out of that epidemic now and I follow aesthetics and I do speak at meetings worldwide and internationally and you know all over the country as well so I also am in tune very closely with our plastic surgeon colleagues and so now I feel that there's a little uptick in plastic surgery and people getting plastic surgery done even like preventative facelifts and there's all kinds of crazy things I don't agree with this there's certain things I agree with, but certain things I don't, but it is what it is and it's happening. But a lot of um, younger patients are now having preventative facelifts in plastic surgery where they're retacking and reestablishing the craniofacial anatomy and, and, and suturing like muscle and, you know, kind of repositioning brows at, surgically 
to where before, I feel like in the decade past, in the last maybe like 15 to 20 years maybe even, we were just doing a bunch of filler to kind of just puff up the face to get rid of fine lines and wrinkles, but that's because you're just stretching the skin out and blowing the, the face up, and that's not a good look. So now trends are going the other way, and I feel like more plastic surgeons are, can't, are saying, okay, dissolve all your filler, and let's get in the OR and let's do surgery. So I'm not a plastic surgeon. I'm a minimally invasive cosmetic dermatologist, and I really truly believe in skin quality and skin texture. And when you fix the skin quality and texture and you get healthy, beautiful skin, that will take ages off and give you a very youthful look, regardless of your age. I have some patients who are in their 60s and they have volume loss and they have wrinkles and they look beautiful for you know their age and they have these naturally occurring things happening in their facial anatomy and their changes, but their skin looks good. They don't have brown spots, they don't have scaly patches, they don't have like this dull, lessless, lessless skin. They have beautiful baby skin and yeah, they may have some wrinkles and volume loss, but that's okay. The goal isn't to just puff everybody up with 10 syringes of filler. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm an expert injector and I speak for Allergan and a lot of these different companies um, with respect to teaching other doctors and providers how to inject filler. I love filler, but it has its role and it's not the way you lift, tighten, and snatch the lower face. I'll just tell you that lasers, tightening devices, collagen stimulation, it's gonna tighten that lower face without making you look overinflated and weird. So I can't say enough about that. Now there's an exception. You know, treatments and injectables like Volux, for example. Volux is a jawline filler and a new launch by Allergan for jawline contouring. If somebody comes in with like lower face laxity, I don't just jump in and do a bunch of filler. But what I may do is a little bit of Elacor or Thermage or tightening device and just up, you know, upregulate the collagen synthesis in their skin by the use of medical grade skincare. I may even start them on a prescription strength tretinoin for a little while, have them drink their collagen peptides, and then hit them with lasers and tightening devices to inherently induce their skin's natural ability to tighten itself. Then, if we want to like kind of fine tune things, we could do a little bit of Volux, you know, along the jawline to define that even further but you don't start with that, or at least I don't, and that's the way I practice dermatology. So I always want to say that, you know, when somebody's coming in for lower face rejuvenation, there's there's fillers, yes, but that's not the first starting place, and that's not the end-all, be-all for lower face rejuvenation. You want to start with lasers. You want to start with tightening devices, things that are going to induce your skin's natural ability to tighten itself and to make these extracellular, you know, matrix proteins, which give um, skin that tight, firm contour. Okay, so it could also be very overwhelming when I just say lasers. You know, people get lasers mixed with broadband light, mixed with tightening devices. So I'm gonna kind of categorize it out for you. And again, this is my area of expertise. This is my specialty. And to go into a little bit more of my, my, my education and background, not only was I, you know, dermatology residency trained, but I trained at UCLA, which is in the middle of Westwood, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, West LA. We were doing Botox and filler and lasers like our first day of residency, where some other residency programs that aren't in like, like a cosmetically, um, you know, sound area, you know, if you're training in like Wisconsin or if you're training in the, in the East Coast and not NYU or Miami or, you know, LA, but in, in, a, in an institution where you're not getting that much cosmetic training, you may not have that education and background. And so starting out strong out the gate for my first day of residency when I was just a baby, I mean, I was in my 20s and I, you know, got familiar with these treatments. And then also after that, um, you know, being a clinical professor of cosmetic dermatology at UCLA where I stayed on faculty and I I taught the derm, you know, residents and the medical students, and then after that, doing an advanced fellowship training in procedures and laser and laser dermatology and aesthetics. So I've had a lot of training in this, and I feel like if I can simplify everything that I know, just like how I talk to patients at their first time consult, maybe this will make sense because it can be super overwhelming when you're trying to like look online for, okay, I want to do some anti-aging treatment. What do I do? Microneedling, BBL, lasers, and there's like a thousand types of lasers and which one works and which one's better than the other one and thermage melts fat and, and oh, therapy is painful and it doesn't work. You hear all these things. So I'm going to try to, on this channel, focus more on like the, true, the truth and honesty. So when I break things down um, with respect to different treatment options for lower face reju rejuvenation, you have lasers. Now in the laser category, you have ablative lasers, you have non-ablative lasers. Ablative lasers just basically are a little bit more aggressive, they're a little bit stronger, but the results are a little bit better because that's the flip side. When things are more aggressive or invasive, usually the results are more substantial. And you have non-ablative non lasers, which are actually very good too, but the downtime's a little bit less, the um, the level, the strength of the, the treatments are a little bit weaker, but it doesn't mean it doesn't 
doesn't work. It's actually a really popular treatment in my office to do a lot of non-ablative lasers because people don't have the downtime, but they get better results. And they'll do maybe two or three treatments with a non-ablative laser versus one treatment with an ablative laser, but they don't have that downtime as much and they still will end up at the same endpoint. It's just what path you want to take to get there. So you have ablative and non-ablative lasers. Now, they go by different names. So you have Fraxel. Now Fraxel can be a Fraxel repair or Fraxel restore. Fraxel just means fractionated, where you're poking thousands of tiny little holes in the skin. You're not fully ablating and you're not taking off a full thickness of that skin. You're just basically getting little cylinders or columns of treatment zones instead of just affecting the whole surface of the skin, which kind of helps speed up the recovery and the downtime and still has very effective results. Now, ablative lasers will just vaporize that tissue out and take it out. So these are things like a CO2, an erbium, and even like a fractionated ablative laser, like a fractal re repair, will help um, tighten and stimulate collagen and just for surface of the skin as well. So that's those are lasers. And within those categories, you know, you can have a halo, you can have moxie, you can have clear and brilliant, you can have Fraxel. So I'll do a whole laser um, a YouTube video later just to kind of keep it more focused on just a broad um, treatment options for lower phase rejuvenation. But lasers are that just that. They're different light-based devices that help stimulate collagen and tighten the skin. And then you can go into all different kinds of lasers. And again, I'll do a video just on lasers again if you guys want to break that down further. But try, trying to simplify it, you have lasers, which are light-based devices. You have energy-based devices. Now, energy just puts heat in the form of either ultrasound, microwave, you know, radio frequency, monopolar, bipolar radio frequency. There's different um, energy-based devices. But what they do is they put heat deep into the skin that stimulates a fibroblast, which are the collagen producing cells to lift and tighten the skin. And it doesn't matter what age you are. Sometimes people say, well, am I too old to stimulate collagen? And the answer is no. We can stimulate collagen and get beautiful results in people who are in the fifth, sixth, and seventh decades of life who have never done any of these laser treatments. Now, it's true that people that start younger will be more accustomed and their skin will respond a little bit better when they reach that age, just like working out. When you see a really ripped, like 65-year-old woman, I have some patients that come in and their arms are just ripped and they're in their 60s. They didn't just start working out. Their body has been conditioned and their musculoskeletal system has been conditioned to just respond very readily to um, working out. Skin's the same way. My beauties that started in their 20s or 30s or 40s and now they're in their 60s and they have been using medical grade products and doing little laser treatments here and there. When I do a thermage or a you know laser treatment on one of those people, their skin snaps back and it wakes up and it responds because it's conditioned to it. It happens over a lifetime, but that's not to say if you're older and you've never or more mature and you've never done these treatments, it's not like it's not gonna work. It just, you know, you'll respond a little bit quicker, faster, better if your skin's conditioned and you've been doing this, you know, for a lifetime. So after energy-based devices, then you have microcoring or microneedling. I'm not a big microneedling fan. I mean, everybody always asks me about Morpheus 8. They come into my office all the time. And Morpheus 8, I, if people out there have had a great response to it, correct me if I'm wrong and more power to you, that's awesome. But I've had a lot of people have complications, haven't responded, and they're always linked, it, wrapped up in some package, right? So when a Medispa offers a package for something, that should be a red flag right away. I never do packages in my office. I may recommend three treatments of a Fraxel or a Clear and Brilliant, but I want you to come back because you like the results, not because you're roped in by some membership or some package because it doesn't work, but you have to come in to get the treatment because you've already paid for it. No, and I feel that Morpheus and a lot of Medispas are that way. You have to become a member, get a membership, or you have to buy a package of I don't know how many. How about just doing one and seeing how you respond and coming back at your own will and getting a second or third treatment? The result, because the results are very underwhelming. I've had a lot of patients end up in my office and say, okay, Dr. Cabell, now I need a laser because I've done I don't know how many microneedling treatments and it didn't do anything. Now, that may not be true for somebody who's younger, but when you're younger, you know, you, you can do a clear and brilliant and you'll get more out of that than you will, in my opinion, a microneedling treatment. So, to each his own, if you've had microneedling and you like it, great, but I've seen nothing but complications that I have to reverse from other providers doing microneedling and unhappy patients with that have wasted a lot of money and have gone through discomfort and pain for less than desirable and suboptimal results. That's microneedling. Now we have microcoring. So microcoring is just that. You take microscopic cores of skin out to tighten and essentially shrink wrap the skin. 
I did a whole microcoring video on YouTube. I actually have to do an updated video because we've had the device now for, gosh, I don't know how many months now, but we're having amazing results. Everybody's happy with it. Um, and I'll get in, it's not an Elecor video. I can talk about Elecor in, in a different video, but the technology of it is you basically have thousands of tiny little needles that are hollow needles and they take out cylinders of skin, microscopic, thousands of them. So you're basically essentially excising and removing skin in a scarless fashion. The holes are so small and they're engineered. There's been a lot of research in and studies going into the perfect amount of skin that needs to be removed without causing any scarring, but enough to shrink wrap the skin. So when you when you take when you have a facelift and they just remove the skin, they take about you know a, a centimeter, centimeter and a half a strip of skin by the ear, and then you have this horrible scar in front of your ear. But what Elacor does is they takes them out that takes out that same amount of skin, but in multiple little pinpoints. So it looks like micro needling, but it's removing skin. So those little holes look bigger after micro coring than they do for micro needling, but it's more meaningful because you're actually doing something. You can't remove skin without it tightening. I mean, it's gonna definitely tighten the skin. So we're having great results with Elacor. It's a little bit more advanced and a little bit more high, you know, a higher level of aggression when you're talking about lasers and energy-based devices, microneedling, you have microcoring, because that's kind of more of like, almost like a surgical treatment, but you know, there's no OR, there's no scars, and people look amazing, and you're basically just removing skin. So that's one of my favorite things for lower face rejuvenation. So when I see a patient for the first time, they're like, doctor, I need to like do something about my lower face laxity. I see patients in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s in my office, and everyone's in a different time in their life, and everyone has different skin quality, texture, and skin turgor. I have some 50-year-olds that look amazing, and they've never had anything done. They're just genetically blessed, and they've been using good products, and they don't have that much laxity. And then I may have a 35-year-old that lost a bunch of weight, or you know, and, and, and just maybe has been in the sun a lot, or you know, rides horses or sails and just has a lot of photo damage or runners too will get really hollow in here and get a lower face laxity even when they're younger. So it's not an age thing. It's it's an individual patient by patient customizable treatment that I will do when I evaluate someone for their lower face laxity. And then I give them different options. We can do laser resurfacing with different lasers that's more superficial collagen stimulation. You could do energy-based devices, which is a deeper stimulation of collagen synthesis, which helps snatches and tightens the skin a little bit better. Lasers are great for a little bit for tightening, but they're not tightening devices. They're more resurfacing, rejuvenating devices that are there to make your skin quality look good, get rid of brown spots, fine lines, shrink pore size, all that stuff. But tightening devices like Thermage, Soft Wave Therapy, Thermage is my favorite. I'm not a big Soft Wave All Therapy fan, but I just, I'm not really impressed with those results. I've had all these devices and machines in my office at one point, guys. So this is just tried and true and you know, based on real anecdotal data and real patient results. But the way that those work is they just tighten. They don't remove brown spots or fine lines or wrinkles or pores or anything like that. Lasers will do a little bit of both, but it's a more superficial treatment and, and, and tightening effect, whereas a tightening device is just there to tighten and not to do anything else. And then microneedling, supposedly in theory helps with you know fine lines and wrinkles and acne scars and things like that again not a fan because i'm not very impressed with the results i think you can spend your money on many other more efficacious treatments then you have microcoring like elacor which really helps tighten the lower face now with any of these treatments anywhere from one to three treatments may be needed again i'll never do a package because i want you to say wow i love these results dr cabell i want to schedule my second and third one and if they're not happy then we'll do something else and we'll evaluate why why wasn't this what you wanted or what more do do you want? And some people say, well, I like the tightening, but now I want to focus on the texture of my brown spots. And then we'll switch gears and go to a laser. So having all these treatment options available is super fun as a provider. And I know these devices inside and out. I don't use a drop down menu. I don't have to YouTube it or look it up or take a course. This is in my brain because my entire life I've been studying laser physics, you know, skin histology, dermatology, and the effects that skin has on these lasers and devices and even injectables too. So so that's kind of the long and the short of it and I feel that if you read something online like I know people are gonna probably drop a comment saying well wh why do you like thermage more than all therapy and I heard thermage melts fat when it's done incorrectly a lot of things can happen when yes thermage can cause fat atrophy or melt fat but that's why you don't go to a medi spa or a group on for thermage in my office you know dr. Kennedy and I have a certain protocol that we follow it's probably different than what most people are doing but that's why our results are m more slam dunk and they're always reproducible patients are always happy and it just really defines that lower face and jowl area now if you go to another like a medi spa like I just went to get my micro my my, my eyebrows microbladed yesterday and I went into this 
this office and like I must have passed 50 Medi spas. Like they're a dime a dozen and it's like the quality has gone down and the quantity has gone up. So when you're getting a thermage at a treatment where it's discounted or there's a bunch of extenders that really don't have extensive training, you're not gonna get the results that somebody who's you know board certified dermatologist who studies like physics and knows how to heat stack and how to stay within the window of temperature and has the most updated technology and software. Like it's just gonna be a different experience for you. Um, that, that said, um, things like Softwave or Ultra therapy, which are also tightening devices, which a lot of my colleagues have in post, sometimes they, though my colleagues like it and I respect them, you know, and I respect that. I used to be an, like an L-therapy fan before I really mastered Thermage and saw how reproducible and amazing those, those results were. So to each his own, but whether you're using microfocus ultrasound or radio frequency, it's all very provider dependent. And I'm going to do another YouTube video on how to search for a provider who knows what he or she is doing, because you'd be surprised when I go into other offices and I give lectures and I teach other the providers, you know, kind of like my technique and how to do things, I should probably just have a whole, you know, I, 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 um, an education course, I think, in my office. Because when I go into other offices, I'm like, where did you guys learn how to do this? And they're like, well, this is my first time, or I don't want to, you know, spend time going to taking a course, I'm just YouTubing it. And I'm like, but you're treating patients with this. Like, that's why people are posting less than desirable outcomes with these treatments. So just know that that happens out there. So when you go somewhere to get a procedure, don't be afraid to ask your provider, where did you go to school? Where did you learn this? How long have you been doing this? What is your experience? Like what meetings have you been to? Where do you get your training? Don't be afraid to because you'd be surprised how many people don't have that, especially in today's world. Aesthetics is a very lucrative space. So a lot of people are cross pollinating and jumping ship from the specialties where they were in and now trying to get into the aesthetic space. But the problem is they haven't been studying it for 20 years. They've been doing emergency medicine or pediatrics and now they want in on you know the aesthetic space. So just be careful because things like melting your fat, um, does, you know, and other, you know, hyperpigmentation can never happen with, with any of these energy-based devices, but people have asked me about that. Um, when done correctly by a skilled provider, these things shouldn't happen. And again, on the same note, I feel like the reason why a lot of people are having these overfilled, crazy faces and looking distorted is that's because lasers and energy-based devices take a higher level of care and training to to perform on patients, whereas anybody can open a syringe of filler and pump a bunch of syringe in people's faces. And that's why people were looking distorted because instead of just tighten this, tightening the skin with lasers and energy-based devices, they were doing filler and filler and filler. And the people, yeah, they're snatched and they don't have any wrinkles, but their faces are this big and they look like cats and like weird people. So anyway, that's the long and the short of it. Always stick with tightening devices and lasers when it comes to lower face rejuvenation and now microcoring, which is awesome and we're having great results with. But then if a time comes where surgery may be needed and if you're open to it, it's not the worst thing in the world to, to have you know facial plastic surgery or a facelift or a neck lift. And a lot of my patients will come see me for decades and they're like, Dr. Kappel, I'm at a point now where my skin looks great and I'm, I'm, I'm as tightened as I can be, but now I need to go to surgery. And then they'll ask me for a referral. And, it's just hard. It's hard for me to refer out because you know it, it, it's a very delicate procedure and it's something that I don't perform myself and I never want to put people in the wrong hands. But for those that may need surgery, sometimes surgery is an option. But everyone is different and in a different place in their life, so it just you know it, it's a personal decision that you have to make. But eventually, after doing most of these minimally invasive treatments, um, you may need surgery. But I have a lot of patients that will probably never need surgery because they're so on top of their skin game. Okay, two more things at the end of this video that I'm realizing that I didn't really talk about that you guys may see me post on and will ask about. That is neuromodulators for lower face uh, rejuvenation and tightening. So there's Botox that can be given along the jawline. It's usually 20 units on each side. It's called the Nefertiti Lift. And the way that works, and this is for people that don't have a lot of laxity but want a little sharpening and definition in their jawline. Um, and all of the muscles in the face and neck are antagonistic, protagonistic on each other. They're all kind of pulling and pushing on, on each other. So when you do neuromodulator and you inject Botox along the jawline, you knock out the muscles that pull down and you allow the resting tone of the muscles that pull up to contract and define that jawline. So, you know, a lot of people will come in and they'll say, I want Botox to help with the facial laxity. And sometimes their facial laxity is so severe that Botox is probably not going to be enough. You need to do a tightening device or a laser or maybe thread lifts or something else. And then we can kind of fine tune it with jawline, you know, Botox. And sometimes people are young enough to where they're like, I see a little bit of snagging, you know, sagging. I wanted to snatch it up a little bit. Sometimes 20 units of Botox for an Nefertiti lift will be enough for them. So again, everybody's different. The other thing I wanted to talk about is um, thread lifts. So 
I was a big proponent of thread lifts. Again, you'll see people post horrific things about thread lifts, but it, when it's done by someone who's not highly trained, of course you're gonna get bad side effects, just as if you had a total hip replacement surgery performed by a cardiologist. Well, it was a cardiologist who did it, not the orthopedic surgeon. It's very operator dependent. Thread lifts work really well. And you know the, the caveat is, is that they don't last forever. It's usually one to two years, and it's for people who want don't really want surgery but want to put it off by a year or two and also what's made with the thread li threads are made up of uh, in the thread lift is um, polyalactic acid and other almost like suture material that um, can induce your skin to make collagen and those extracellular matrix proteins that provide volume so threads not only mechanically lift and pull up on the face or like you know for um, fox eye or for neck lift um, but it also stimulates collagen as well I just don't do threads as much anymore now that I have an Elicor because our Elicor results are so amazing and I'm so in love with that device and what it can do for my patients that I don't do thread lifts as much anymore but I'm still a proponent of it and I do think it's a tool in our toolbox that we can use for lower face rejuvenation so we talked about lasers energy based devices microneedling microcoring thread lifts Botox and I think that's pretty much it um, biostimulatory fillers are more for like neck rejuvenation but not so much for lower face um, fillers we already kind of covered that I have a love-hate relationship with fillers they're good sometimes in certain indications and all and also it's just like the icing or cherry on top after you've kind of done most of the work with our workhorses the tightening devices and the laters for lower face rejuvenation and then if all of that isn't working for you then we refer to plastic surgery and then you can have a lower face and neck lift and that's pretty much it okay so that's my lower face rejuvenation talk today my video today let me know what else you guys want to talk about and again i can do updated videos on Periorbital rejuvenation, lips, neck, chest, body contouring, anything you guys want. There's a new filler that's gonna be coming out this uh, September. I'm one of the only ones that has first access to it and I'm gonna live stream with Allergan once it launches and I'm super excited about that. But there's always new shiny toys and devices on the market. I, again, have access to almost all of them. And if I like them, I'll post them. If I don't like them, I probably just won't say anything at all or I'll give you guys the honest truth. But everything that I post is non-sponsored content, which is a huge rarity today on YouTube, you guys. I mean, I mean, derm residents are now graduating and they're not even taking or looking at jobs where they're seeing patients for a salary. They're now just taking sponsorships by big companies and doing YouTube videos and being YouTubers and not even seeing patients, which I feel is a waste of education and, and training. And I chose not to do that and I will stay true to you with, with that. And um, that's just the way I've always practiced. And I, I'm not stopping now. It's been 20 years. So all my content's non-sponsored. So share it with anyone who wants non-sponsored content by a board certified dermatologist and let me know what else you guys want me to talk about. All right, love you guys.